Hello. In this video, I will show you how to make a simulation such as this one of a rotating body in ANSYS Fluent. In this case, I did a rotating tire. So to start with, here is the CAD that I used for um, this simulation. As you can see, it's just a simple tire. To made this based off of measurements from my own car, and it is relatively simple. That will just make the um, ANSYS solve faster. So first we're going to go into geometry. Um, I use design modeler personally um, and I will show you just kind of how I set this up. So here's how I set it up. I basically just imported the CAD I showed earlier and then I made a sketch and extruded it to create the fluid domain and I then used a boolean to cut the object out of the fluid domain and here's the name selections I created. I did inlet, uh, sim for the walls of the fluid domain, outlet, which is the outlet in the back, the fluid domain itself, and then the wall is all of the edges of the um, wheel. And the easiest way to do this is to just take your pre these previous name selections and hide the faces and then I went up here box select and grabbed all of them and you can check to see um, if you've cur if you've done grabbed all of the faces by clicking and hiding and if there are no faces remaining then you know that you have captured all the faces in a named selection so here's just some prerequisite knowledge that you need to know. Um, if you already know what the right hand rule is, then just skip this portion. But basically, let's say I want to have my object rotate in this direction. What you're going to do is you're going to take your right hand, point your uh, these four fingers in the direction of the arrow, uh, in the direction of your rotation, and then whatever direction your thumb points, that will be your direction of um, rotation. So if, for instance, let's say this is X, Y, and Z is coming out of the page, this rotation would be in the positive Z direction. So for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go over how to create the mesh for the object. That's going to completely depend on your how complicated your geometry is. So you, if you have a very simple geometry, you might not have to mess with this at all or if you have a really complicated one that could be where you end up spending 99% uh, of your time but after you have your mess generated we're going to go to setup edit double precision since this is the student version of ANSYS fluent I can only do up to four solver processes start now depending on how big your mesh is the loading process could take more or less time, but the first thing we're going to go do is go into boundary conditions and just check that all of our boundary conditions are correct, which it appears they are. So next we're going to go into inlet. And you're going to set your velocity magnitude. In this case, I will do 22.5. 352 meters per second, which is approximately equal to 50 miles an hour, and then hit apply and close. So next we're going to go into wall. Uh, we're going to hit moving wall, uh, rotational. Translational would be for if you want to have your object moving forward, back, up, down. It's useful for like if you have a road under the object you could have your road moving with uh with to simulate the car itself moving um so for rotation axis in my case this is going to be zero 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 because i the way i did my um, geometry setup earlier the center of the tire is at zero 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 for the rotation axis direction this is going to be, well, the direction of your rotation axis. And the way you can check this is by going over here 
and clicking this symbol, that will pop up this these axes down here. So as you can see, we have positive Z, positive X, and positive Y. And since my tire is in this direction, the rotation axis, as shown by the right hand rule earlier, will be positive X. So I'll just go ahead and set this to 100. And if you have um, a direction that's not along one of these axes, you would just put whatever proportion. So like if I did 110, that would be off in this direction would be my rotate axis of rotation but I'm gonna set this back to 100 finally you're gonna go up to your speed in my case this is going to be 70.682 radians per second which is the speed my tire would be spinning at 50 miles an hour um, so then once again you're just gonna hit apply close and next we're going to go down to report definitions here you would you can set up whatever um, you want to measure for instance drag force I'd go here drag force wall and I like to do print to console and then you're going to close then we're going to go to initialize hybrid initialization and then after it's done initializing, you're going to go to run calculation. I like to start out with 500 iterations, but that will completely depend on your met, what your needs are. And then calculate. And it will begin to calculate and it will show you your um, whatever report definitions you have set up or you can go here and see your scaled residuals. So I'm just gonna let this run and I will come back to you when it is finished. So since this was a very simple geometry, it converged after 77 iterations. This may take more or less depending on the complexity of your um, mesh. So after it converges, we can go here and it's a little hard with the white on white, but you can see what your what value for the drag you're getting. So, and then another interesting thing is you can go down here to contours. Um, for instance, let's do the contour of static pressure once again on our wall. And if we zoom in here, you can see as expected, you're going to have a high pressure zone in the front. And then you're going to have a low pressure zone in the back. Um, and if you want to get the pretty video from earlier, you come down here to path lines, uh, wall, and then you are going, I like to put it on continuous. And you can set different things like static pressure. I'm just going to leave it on particle variables to show you. And you can either hit save and display, it will load a bit, and it will show you at your path lines at a point in time, or you can hit pulse, it will take a second once again to load, and it will give you the pretty video from early, earlier. And the way the path lines work, is they just come out of whatever of these walls you set up and you can set up custom surfaces for the points to, lines to come out of down here so that's how you get all the information that i've shown you in this video please subscribe if you have any comments or things i can improve please leave them below and bye